Welcome back to our chess story series. And today we are back to look at two female grandmasters by the name of Yifan, uh, Hu Yifan, and Marie Sebag. Uh, you know, Hu Yifan from China is one of the strongest female players of all time. She got a 2700 FIDE rating, which is very, very high. So you could say a super grandmaster. And Marie is no slouch herself, um, being 2,500 in this game and a strong grandmaster in general. I would say the reason why Black lost in this game is the element of surprise. That element is very strong in chess because, you know, there is a quote that says, a player surprised is already have beaten. So watch how you find surprises, Marie, and then checkmates the king. Let's take a look. We start off with a Sicilian. In the Sicilian, Black is saying, you're going to have to pay me for that center. And your payment is in the form of your center pawn. You'll have to trade me for my flank pawn if you ever want to see this again. White says, fine, let's go for the open Sicilian, where my knight will go in the center and ah, just tricked you. Surprise. Already, who you found says, how is my queen doing here? Is my queen out too early or is it just right? Because now it's not so easy to kick my queen. And even if you do, I can always pin you. This is known as the chef over Sicilian. And the whole idea is your knight's going to go away. Then my queen is awesome. I can put the pawn over here, get a little bind going against you. Or I can take out my queen side pieces real quick because that lets me castle long. When these guys come out, ooh, the rook is coming to our favorite file, as you'll see in the game. They try to break the pin. Marie says, no pin for you, and I'll eat your queen. But the knight is gone too. As the knight disappears, it turns out black has two bishops. But are they really doing that much? Are they that effective? Because my knights are awesome. My knights are striking in the center. Your bishops still need some time. Okay. As your knight goes over here, we can pin him too. When you play e6, which is what happened, your knight's not doing so good. We could give away both bishops right now and go to the end game. So they will take with, let's say, queen. We take, they take. And a lot of kids will say, oh, Mr. Mike, look, double pawns, isolated pawn. Look, their pawns are broken. But this is very healthy. This is a very healthy pair of pawns. Because after a bishop comes to e7, they have a complete brick, which is effective against these knights. Because the knights are going to be looking for work and can't find any. Okay. Uh, the knights are no good against this brick, and the bishops are going to be great in any endgame. So for that reason, who you found says, no, you don't get to get my bishops, but I will get to get your bishops. I'll eat your bishops when I feel like it. Also, can I get my f pawn rolling later on to break down your center? So we take out more pieces. The knight comes to the middle, so he can be very proud. And so that the king can castle queenside and we can get the pawn strong going, just like in the last story we saw. Black says, how about I bother your bishop? You have to choose. Do you want to double up my pawns? Or do you want to run back like a chicken? If you double up my pawns, I shoot it that way because, you know, d6 may be weak. So there may be some sort of trick with takes, takes and queen takes in the future. So most people will just take with pawn. But after, let's say, um, knight b3, queen c7, black is, again, very healthy. In any middle game, the king is very safe. This is called the brick, the ultimate brick. And it's very hard to break it down. For that reason, white says, no, you don't get my bishops. Again, what I do get is a discovery. And the second I look at you, I have all these discoveries in the air. So almost all strong players run away. Unless you're very brave or very foolish you don't just stay there you don't let the truck hit you you run away and so after the queen runs away we castle opposite sides this starts the pawn storm just like in the last example we looked at but in this pawn storm we have the bishops against the knights the good thing for the knights is that they actually see things they got scope whereas that bishop yeah, Blocking the C file, not really doing much because this pawn is very solid on E4, very hard to break down. At some point, the bishop usually runs back, opening the way for the file. 
Okay. In the actual game, we got F4 going for the attack. Black says, Pawn Storm. White says, You too. Same. The Pawn Storm's coming that way too. Because if he ever pushed me away, now we get the outpost. And you know how much I love outposts, right? We're going to go back with this knight, kick out that knight, maybe trade him off, stick one knight here, stick the other knight there, and this square is ours forever. For that reason, Black said, no, my bishop runs away, and you don't get any outposts. You don't get a fort for your knights. And here comes more pawns. The pawns just keep on coming. Who you find says, how about I kick out your knight? And after he goes back, you can bring out your rook. And so the rook hurried to the other side before the knight got kicked. Okay, we kick out the knight, and he decided to get adventurous, jump into this outpost. Not a bad idea, but didn't help in this game. If the knight goes back here, it just feels wrong because it's very passive, right? The knight can't participate, and our knights and bishop will participate. Okay, for that reason, the knight is dreaming about an outpost and we get ready for the attack. Already F6 is in the air. We're swinging it over their heads saying, oh, one day I'm going to do it. But the threat is stronger than the execution. Before we actually do it, we're just going to scare them. And later, when it's time, we're going to do it. Okay, Black says, whoa, 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 but I can trade. I'm going to trade queens. You're going to trade with me. We go to an end game. There is no attack in that end game. My attack's just getting started. My knight gets the outpost. Then what do you have? You just have two knights against two of my pretty bishops. That's what you have. Okay. For that reason, White said, how is your knight feeling? Can I just mate you? I'm not trading queens with you. My attack will keep raging. And when your knight runs away to his favorite outpost that he's very proud of, I'll get rid of him. We get rid of the awesome knight, then it's time for double pawns, time for the open d file. The rook is finally happy on d1 after all these years and all that time. And without the outpost knight, it's a lot easier to checkmate people because I can get the nail pawn here. Your knight can't help stop mate in many cases. Very hard to mate with this guy on the board. Once he's gone, flop gates are opened. Okay. Black says, wait, 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 slow down. I'm almost there. Let me catch up. I'm, like, give me like two moves. I'll just kick out your knight. You go away and mate. Sounds good? Let's do that. No, no time. Who you found made sure that she was first to the target. Because after F6, you have to react somehow. If you just ignore me, I think White's attack will get there first. White can get the bishop. White can take back like this. And even if you do take on a two, we take that knight, we can take here, and the king is falling down very soon. Whereas this bishop is actually a great defender. Okay, For that reason, Marie chose to run away. And here is where the surprises start, because Marie says, you'll take my pawn, I'll take back, my bishop is awesome, my king is safe, and my bishop will make sure there is no mate, because even if you do take on f7 one day, maybe, I can just run away here. It's not a big deal. I can block everything with the bishop here, and my bishop is just blocking any attack in general. So you're going to take me, right? Wrong. Surprise. We get the first big brick in the pawn storm. And the brick is done to blow up the king cover. Because one pawn doesn't really open things up. In fact, sometimes people just run away here and use it as a shield, right? And we don't want that. In order to open lines, we blow everything open with two pawns. Whichever way you take, it's not going to be fun. Okay. In the actual game, she chose to take this way. Um, if she chose to take the other way, ooh, I smell checkmate. Okay. The reason she chose to take this way is so that knight g5 can be defended against. Probably h6 and covers everything just in time. But not what happened in the game. 
If the knight takes, by the way, probably the same thing, probably knight g5, and then f7 is also hanging in the end there, okay? So I think Marie was really scared of this knight coming, and she said, I can always block you with the h-pawn if I take this way. But then the f-pawn becomes the hero. Now everything falls into place. All of white's pieces are suddenly perfect after taking, taking, check. So it looks like the pawn is blocked. Marie can run away. Looks like these pawns make great shields for their king. Looks like everything's in the right place for black. And then b4 is still coming. This pawn storm is still coming. But no. It turned out it was already too late for black. Because they still need 2-3 moves to get to this guy. Whereas I just need 1. I just need check and mate. So when Marie saw this, she's like, uh-oh. This is pro problematic. This is trouble. How do I stop it? What about h6? I'll play here, and you can't get me, right? I'm safe, right? It's all good, right? Surprise! Another one. After bishop takes h6, we find another way in through the light squares. Okay? Black has to take, because otherwise the bishop runs back with mate. Right? For example, mate. Okay? For that reason... Black has to take, and the queen creeps in through the light squares. The king cannot really defend, incapable of doing that. So that's why g5, trying to get rid of the queen, and the queen keeps on creeping. If the king runs here, oh, uh, 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 let me just sneak into g8 and mate you like this. In the actual game, we got king g7 trying to stop mate and blocking rook f6, right? It's blocking, everything is safe. First of all, let's say hi to this pawn. How is the pawn doing? Not so great? It has to be covered. Maybe king h7, which is what happened. Well, in the game, she actually played king f6, but king h7 wouldn't really help either. At this point, black is already lost, you could say. Um, king h7 would probably get exploded with rook here, rook here, rook here. Uh, maybe there are even better ideas. Like, for example, maybe even this, now that I think of it with mate in mind. Okay, queen g8 is made. So for that reason, black said, no, the bishop will guard the pawn. But it didn't help either. Boom. First, we take out the exit of the king. I don't care about the bishop. I care about the exit. Now that the king has no exit, we got him right where we want him, surrounded with a weird defender buried on a fate. And at this point, Marie got desperate and tried for counterplay, but it was already lost. There was nothing she could really do to help. So that's how we finished the game. And now we have another surprise coming. Ready? Try to find it. You have three seconds to find the surprise. Three. Yeah, and feel free to pause, by the way. Three, two, one. If you say queen h6, you're totally right. Surprise! Out of nowhere, the queen comes in, says hi to the king, and it's a queen sacrifice. Here comes the first queen sacrifice. We take it back with the rook, and the king has to go to g7. He's forced to go to g7. Now that he's over here, we got the two rooks. They're not enough to checkmate, or are they? Second queen sacrifice. Take my queen. It's a queen now. And they can't take with the rook because check, double check. They have to take with the king. And there's your mate on h8. And there's the surprise that finished the game. So just as black was about to get to us, we got to them first. Why did white win? Because of the element of surprise. And because their attack was just a little bit faster, they opened the files with the brick a little bit faster than black did. 